Hello again, my name's John and welcome to another video. For those who don't know, I've been a professional cook or chef running our family catering business for many years and I'm now retired. So I've decided to share and adapt for the home kitchen some of our family recipes here on YouTube and I hope you find them useful and enjoyable to watch. Thank you very much. This time I'll be demonstrating how I make my pork pies at home. I'll be making a couple of medium sized hand raised pork pies. I'll explain later if you're not familiar with that description. And I'll also be making a large gala pork pie. That's the one with the boiled egg running through the middle. Now this video is quite long so I've split it into two parts. But don't worry I'll be posting both videos at the same time. Now pork pie pastry is known as a hot water crust pastry and that's where I'll start the recipe. I find it best to make the pastry the day before and keep it in the fridge overnight. But you can make it the same day as long as it rests for at least two hours before using it. I'll be doing enough pastry for all three pies that I'm making in the video. That's two ordinary pork pies and one garlic pie. But I'll put all the ingredients in the description box underneath the video for each pie individually. Right, in the mixing bowl there's 500 grams, that's 18 ounces of all purpose or plain flour, plus one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now in the pan I've put 110 grams, that's 4 ounces of butter, and 130 grams, that's 4.5 ounces of lard, into exactly 200 grams, that's 7.5 ounces of water. Now bring the mixture to a simmer, but be careful the hob isn't too hot, as this combination of fat and water has been known to spit a bit if the heat is too high. Now pour the liquid into the bowl and combine it with the flour. Once it comes together, turn it out and knead it a little bit but not too much. It should be cool enough to handle by now. But test it anyway before putting your hands in. Actually, it's quite a pleasant feeling when you're kneading hot pastry. Then wrap the pastry in cling film or put it in a plastic bag then let it cool completely before putting it in the fridge for at least two hours before using it. On to the pork. Now I'll be processing my own meat but I'll leave the amounts of minced and lean pork you'll need from your butcher in the ingredients list in the description box underneath the video for each pie I make. But I thought you'd find it interesting on how I make my own filling. If you have your own mincer or meat grinder, I recommend you do your own too. And to save any confusion, when I say minced pork, you may know that as ground pork. Now, in this tray I've got a pork shoulder joint. I've taken the skin off and cut it into pieces. And there's also some belly pork, with the skin taken off too. So, what I've got is some semi-lean pork, some belly pork for the fat content, and some lean pork from the same shoulder joint that I'll finely dice rather than mince. Ok, now I'll start by cutting the lean parts of the pork into small pieces, about 10mm, that's just under half an inch. So in the finished pie there'll be some nice tender but lean meaty bits along with the minced filling. And for the pies I'm making in this video, I need 300 grams of this finely chopped lean pork, that's about 10 ounces. On to mincing the rest of the meat. I'll start by cutting the skin belly pork into manageable chunks. Mm -hmm. 
I've already done the rest of the shoulder meat off camera. Now this is my mincer or grinder that I have at home. I've owned many over the years but this is the best domestic one I've come across so far. I'm not being sponsored by the makers of this grinder by the way, it's just I'm impressed with this machine. I'll show you how I make my sausages with it in a future video. Ok, I'll start by loading up the hopper at the top of the machine and with the medium cutting plate installed, I'll push it all through once, but it will need to go through again. A little tip at this stage. When mincing or grinding meat like this, it's much easier and more effective if everything is very cold. I had this meat in the freezer along with the machine head for half an hour before starting. Don't have the meat frozen, but very cold where it's just on the firm side. It's also very good for the machine as it stops it overheating, especially when you're doing a lot of meat. Once it's all gone through, I'll give it a good mix by hand. Now there's much more here than I need for the recipe, so once it's had a thorough mix, I'll take out just what I need for the pies, which is one kilogram, that's two pound three ounces, and the rest will go in the freezer for making sausages at a later date. Ok, I've weighed off what I need for the pies and like I said earlier, this has to go through the grinder once more. And as you can probably see, it's a much more even colour and consistency as the meat and fat is now evenly dispersed throughout the mix. Right, now we're on the final stage of preparing the meat. If you're getting your minced or ground pork from the butchers, you'll also need a little lean to do the diced pieces of pork. And a small skinless boneless pork loin steak is ideal for this. So whether you've processed your own like me, or you've bought yours, we're all at the same point now. The first job now is to mix the lean and the mince, then we can start adding the seasoning. In this container I've got half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon each of thyme and sage, a quarter teaspoon of ground white pepper, and finally a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper for a bit extra heat. Now give that a thorough mix, and the best thing to mix it with is your hands. But make sure you've got gloves on, because we are dealing with raw meat. And with it being raw meat, how will you know if the seasoning's right? Very simple, just taste a bit. <laughs> I bet that had you a little worried. Of course you have to cook a little first and this is the only way you can find out when doing a new recipe. Once you get it right, write it down so next time you make it, you'll know exactly how much to add. And don't test the sample when it's red hot, as your taste buds will get a much better idea of the seasoning when it's cooled a little. Now having made this recipe many times, I know I need another half teaspoon of both peppers but I needed to show you this method on how to safely test something that's raw. Now, after dealing with raw meat, especially mince, it's important to clean everything down with hot water and detergent and finish by wiping down all surfaces with an antibacterial agent. Right. That's it for part one with the pastry and the meat prepared. In part two I'll be demonstrating how to put these wonderful pies together. Well thanks again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. In the meantime here's a few of my other videos you may want to watch. So, until the next time, bye for now.